I thought it would be interesting to share with my viewers the type of education that I've been seeking out in regards to uh, human movement and the stuff that I've been implementing with myself and my athletes over the last couple years and integrating into pure strength training. It's a bit of a journey because no one has all the answers. It's a continual refinement and uh, movement forward and, and that's what I'm trying to be a part of. I just recently finished the doctoral level class uh, on the flexion and tolerant back with Dr. Philip Snell and you've seen uh, probably some videos in relation to that that we worked on together. This one uh, was uh, held by uh, Dr. Craig Liebenson and uh, he's got a number of different uh, works out there. Definitely a leader in the field of uh, human movement. This was the first three days of a six-day uh, DNS course, Dynamic Neuromuscular Stabilization. You may hear that term in some of my instructional videos. But it also covered uh, material from other areas such as uh, some of Stuart McGillow's work, uh, Gray Cook's FMS, uh, as well as uh, some PNF, and we, we touched on a, a few other areas as well. Overall, really good you know, use of putting together a lot of different uh, methodologies. Here you're going to find, uh, I actually got to lead some instruction for about an hour on uh, deadlift and uh, some other movement as well. And uh, also did uh, some refinement on uh, Craig's uh, deadlifting here. Now typically I have been the odd man out with being the guy that is, you know, the strength athlete, strength coach in the room amongst a room full of, uh, you know, chiropractors, physical therapists, uh, doctoral level students. but. Uh, that's uh, where I'm trying to go uh, with uh, the knowledge base that I'm building and trying to integrate into my training and, and that's what I'm trying to share with you guys of this what actually works what can we put to use in the strength training world I think it's clear what I'm doing is working I want to uh, show you a couple case studies not too many um, otherwise it's going to get pretty boring the other for thing you that happens here is that we should be able to sense that our shoulders are feeling like they're getting broader so we're doing anything other than, than rounding the shoulders. They're getting wider and wider and wider. As, as uh, the pinky draws into radial adduction, um, what happens is the shoulders go that way and the spine shoots up. And everything narrows right there. How do you make that a <coughs> home routine when someone's not there to hold the finger? Well, the first thing the person can do is they can plant the thenar and just drag the pinky across. The next okay. thing they can do, if they're holding a golf club, is just put a little bias on the pinky. If they're holding a bar, they can put a little bias on the pinky. Okay. Okay. Uh, we can uh, uh, also create that motion there. Uh, we definitely don't want to be here. We don't want to be there. Okay. This is this is the goal. <clears throat> well, kind of like a foot anticlination. Like a small foot. Like yonder short foot. Okay. of the palm. Okay, so this is this is from, from yoga. It's a mudra. Okay, so let's go. There we go. Good. Good. And go back. That's it. Again. Great. Alright, so so stand up. And we'll do our first test. We'll do that test. And then we change it all. It's no pain. Okay. And then let's do horizontal adduction. Okay. And I used to think that horizontal adduction was AC, and so I had to mobilize AC. I used to think this was SC, I had to mobilize AC. But we learned a long time ago from the osteopaths that when they took PNF, hold relax, contract relax techniques, and they incorporated them for the purpose of mobilization of joints, they called it muscle energy because they were using physiology to mobilize the joints. They were using inherent muscle energy to mobilize joints. And we can do this without uh, resistance from the practitioner as well. Um, let's go over, let's check sweeps. Let's check sweeps. So it was a little biased forward, lock your elbow, don't let me pull. Okay. And then let's check internal rotations. So Everything's like before, speed over, so you're not out. It's a little painful. It's stronger though. Yeah, it's much so let's look at the a bear position now. And let's uh, lift 
left hand a little bit and right foot. So that's pretty significant. So the hip got stronger too, a lot stronger. Let's lay on your right side. shoulder, ear, hold your leg up, and we can already see how the muscle fired. Let it all go. Hold your leg up. The muscle is just grabbing, don't let you push. So, obviously we would give that as a self-care. Would that be the only thing I'd give? Um, I'd have to adjudicate other things. We'd have to see where the limit of capability is, where the failure is, stay in the pain-free range, and shore up any weak areas. But that would be a start. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, thanks. All right, uh, both sides? No, just my left medial. medial. What's your past, past uh, involvement in sports? Uh, and uh, was there any pain with popping? Your test, uh, Professor McGill used to in the, in the clinical prediction role for um, uh, distinguishing people that you would be a fool not to do stable with. Uh, not a McKenzie case, not therefore a directional preference case, not a uh, manipulation case, a state case. Now. By saying you fool not to do stay, that doesn't mean that if we had leg symptoms, you couldn't also be direction reference. That doesn't mean that if you found something to manipulate, you couldn't also manipulate. And that's real important to realize from the CPRs or clinical prediction rules that the evidence for stabilization or directional preference, i.e. McKenzie or manipulation, um, studies that show stratification is better than not stratifying, in other words, subclassifying is better than not subclassifying. The categories are not exclusive, that's a big misinterpretation of the literature. The, the main thing is to realize that if you mismatch and don't do the one that's indicated, you will get worse results. And that, the studies are really Please. Switch. Lock your ribs, lock your pelvis, don't let me move this. So remember, Charlie Weingroff, we want to shoot a we want to shoot a cannon from a canoe. We can't, can't be a canoe anymore. We now have to become an aircraft carrier in and out. We need a stable base. Ribs and pelvis can't be moving independently. The movement is at the femur. We don't want a false yaw to hip extension. We don't want pelvic motion. We don't want uh, pseudo hip extension with an anterior pelvic tilt. We want pure hip extension. Great job. Switch. Beautiful. Good. Try to come back to our chest. How's she feeling? Getting better? Yeah. So it's a lot better than when we started. So we got to load up back size. We would just adjudicate it that way. Um, Bill? You had a question. Oh, early? 